Howdy folks, this is Tom Barbelay here. Howdy once again. <laughs> Every time I come to record this stuff there's always a problem. It's typically the audio levels, so apologies in advance if the audio levels are a bit wrong. I wanted to uh, show some stuff that I'm working on currently with Noble Ape. Um, I thought the easiest way to do it would be to probably run this version of the simulation. I don't know whether this is the threading version or the non-threaded version. I think it's probably the non-threaded version. Uh, we'll find out very quickly as we run it. And yeah, this is a uh, this is a known bug that the two windows don't come up together. You gotta love that overshadowing that it does. Anyway, so the first part was just to talk a little bit about the OpenGL version of the simulation. I should not be doing that. What on earth is going on? That's very strange. Maybe it was just a general graphics overview. Anyway, so this is the um, standard, as it comes in the box version, the node lape simulation, uh, running in the, the GUI mode. Uh, obviously the command line provides a lot more information. The thing that interests me about this is actually just the raw speed. You can kind of see it moving around and uh, nips over. Um, so there's a lot of underlying mathematics but it's done relatively quickly. Although it is taking a normally long time to actually do a full day. Uh, but you see things like tides and you see the other apes running around, you've got the cognitive simulation, you've got various overview um, items, uh, energy, speed, all that kind of good stuff. So let's wait for it just to uh, conclude, or at least go to sleep. So we're getting to night time, you have the colour variations as well, which I really like. And here we go, here's dusk and night time. Cloudy, cloudy night. Okay, so that's that version. Uh, you've got to appreciate the time that it took to uh, actually start up. And we have the OpenGL version, which is turned on just by doing this. This is for the Mac version only. Um, implementing initially for the Mac version. Okay, so this doesn't have any of the coloration, but it's the... God, you've got to love this. What on earth is going on here? Okay. So this is running exactly the same simulation. Well, it's not exactly the same simulation. But the first thing that you notice when the, is that it's actually moving a lot slower now. Sorry, it just um, it just moved, uh, I think because of tides, but the tides aren't actually updating on this version. So you can already get a sense that the simulation isn't running as fast for the OpenGL version. There's a good reason for that, I'll, I'll show you in the code in a minute. Um, but let's at least get it moving. Or alternatively, let's just drop it in the water so you get a sense of the movement. So this is uh, computing a vast number of polygons, and that's actually the problem. To get it roughly the same level of quality, I think they would be comparable quality in terms of the resolution of polygons, you actually need to do a lot more computation. And the methods that have been previously described in, uh, in Ape Realities associated with uh, like doing preloaded landscapes and these kind of things, I've considered. In fact, I think that's probably the easiest option here. But again, it requires a vast amount of memory, and it probably uh, requires some um, not tessellation, but some division of the various landscape components and putting them all back together and probably rejoining them along sections. I have an algorithm which I'm going to implement that also does um, selective culling. Uh, and I think that would be, well not even selective culling, basically it looks for um, similar or identical gradients and just provides the um, the same, well, the fewer polygons over the uh, similar gradients or identical gradients, which basically simplifies the landscape a little bit. Simplifies the landscape by about a third, so you might see a third speed improvement. But little things like this stuff, I'm just not really a big fan of. Um, anyway, so this is the first problem that I'm looking at. I want to get out of this uh, version. I'm a huge fan of the OpenGL. Let me, uh, for folks who are interested who are actually OpenGL, Enthusiasts, let's see if I can bring this over. 
So this is the problem currently. Um, it's just a, a map update. Uh, and I think there's more optimization that can be done, but it's just basically creating a, a physical map and a color map associated with that. So that's problem number one I'm looking at currently. Let me turn this off. Oh, I can't. Uh, yep, cool. Okay, so come back to the subversion mode. The second thing that I'm looking at, and this comes in parallel with the uh, threading discussion, I probably should read, read, I probably should run, sorry, this is the first thing in the morning, yeah, um, a version of the, the threaded uh, simulation as well to get a sense of the current speed associated with that. Why don't I do that? Okay. Uh, we're going to take a trip down. <laughs> Okay. I I think this is the function of the recording software. This is just really, really bad. Look at that. Come on. Come on. I don't know what is going on with this. So this is the threaded version of the simulation. You get roughly double speed. You know, I probably should have noted that. Um, but yeah, so you get quite a bit of uh, interesting stuff. The main concern that I have is the one-to-one -one mapping. Um, which is basically you take a non-threaded version of the simulation, you take a threaded version of the simulation, and they provide the same output. That's pretty critical because, uh, well, as I'll talk about, you need that. So the next step, I think, is to establish network, a uh, network version of the simulation. And here, uh, no weather. Here, what I'm looking to do, I'm going to put my mouse here for, uh, well, a descriptive reason, is to basically the underlying landscape and weather simulation, all these kind of things can remain um, constantly updating on, on just basically time ticks because the underlying randomization, all these components are, uh, well, they're sequential in time, uh, irrespective of how random it appears. Basically, you give it a seed, it continues on, that's fine. So my view is that if you were to have a number of computers running node for late, the way that you would distribute it is based on, I'm just going to wiggle the mouse here a little bit, uh, is based on the uh, apes being distributed. And the main weakness to that is there's a lot of ape-ape communication uh, which changes both apes. Uh, so, for example, you've got gestures, you've got a wide variety of actions, and you also have language communication, where basically the apes need to know what's going on quite intimately with the other apes internal, um, you know, what have you, simulation components. So the thought that I had was that the apes that are within physical proximity to one another should be on the same computer. Uh, and the test here is to see how far an ape will move in a given period of time, or whether they actually maintain some degree of territorialness, um, which I think is probably the case. But it's an, interesting, it's an interesting process. I mean, you can see that's, what, two days worth, and the ape has not really moved, but there are established pathways uh, through the simulation environment. Uh, and you will see apes that do wander across the pathways. What I was thinking originally of doing was actually creating different kinds of dots and starting off each ape uh, based on what quarter they are um, in a simulation area, having a kind of different dot uh, shape, and then running it over a period of time to see how the dots had actually uh, progressed and if there was some kind of net migration or these kind of things, or if there were established tribes. Now, as you see here, um, there are quite you know, quite interesting kind of tribal groups. You have the one which is probably from where the, the mouse is currently. I don't really want to move the mouse because it's indicating how far this ape is travelling. And as you can see, within, what, four or five days, it's basically traversed more than half the map. So let's describe the groups. So I see this kind of being one group, maybe these guys up here as another group, and then you've got a kind of another group of stragglers. So over three computers, that's the way it would be represented. But I think what's more important here, and this feeds back into the whole threaded model, um, is to minimize and, well, minimize in terms of number and maximize in terms of productive information the kind of ape ape communication that's going on. And that is quite an interesting process. Uh, what I'm thinking almost is of um, uh, not necessarily a kind of delta communication, but uh, almost like a bulletin board communication <laughs> uh, of, of, 
you know, important information that can be transferred per term cycle to each uh, noble ape from each other noble ape as needed. Um, obviously, the option will be to not communicate as priority, uh, but then if they have to make communication, the communication will be prioritized accordingly. And this information can be transferred between machines and thus allow the, the simulation to run. I'm yet to do a proper surveying of the kinds of ape ape communication that's going on, um, and I think that in and of itself would be quite interesting. Um, there's something to optimize. I have gone through uh, particularly what's now in the body code associated with social action uh, and done some early optimization with that or at least some early um, unification just bringing the stuff together. Uh, but I think there are a number of interesting points here um, associated with uh, creating a version of the simulation which is considerably more scalable across the network with the view that if you had you know 15, 20, um, 100 machines connected uh, then you could do very interesting things. The other thing that I've been thinking about, which is relatively easy uh, in this version of the simulation, is having each, uh, well, having the land areas almost like tiles, where you have a computer simulating each tiled area, and for every new computer you add a new tile to the environment, uh, potentially creating uh, single chains, or in the case of twos or threes or what have you, um, but building uh, accordingly. And the landscape is very scalable in that fashion as well, and that way you could simulate a certain number of apes in your uh, particular tile. Uh, in fact, there are a number of different ways to cut um, cut uh, computational, uh, well, shared uh, computer simulations of node blade uh, over networks. And I think there's a lot of opportunity there as well just to explore some different kinds of uh, problems to date. With regards to threading, um, Gillian, who uh, comes from um, the eastern part of the US, uh, the northeast, has uh, added a simple threading model. There are a few problems associated with it currently, particularly interacting with the graphics and also maintaining the one-to-one uh, -one nature of threaded and non-threaded simulation. Uh, but I think it's all doable, and certainly as you're seeing here, I mean, you're watching it run currently. Uh, it provides a number of interesting insights into the simulation considerably faster. There's still some issue associated with the interface with the command line version, uh, which is another important facet of the simulation. Um, NA long term really is with a almost a kind of de facto way to run the simulation if you want to get particular interesting results or you want to interrogate things in a different way. Um, and I think it's an amazing, amazing interface and hats off to Bob Mottram for all his work and that effort. Um, I think integrating it with the GUI version, well, I have an initial version, but it requires a better threading model, um, will also you know, provide very interesting results and enable you to see and track the physical locations of the apes. It provides an amazing interface, actually, uh, into the simulation. Anyway, I probably should stop rambling. Uh, Tom Barbelay, let me just uh, pick up where it was. Tom Barbelay in the Bay Area, signing out.